Hi, so you might remember from the previous video when we did the battery case, what we did was we put this bright zinc plate on it as, as a connection piece, really, to reduce the ESR. And it was such a lovely metallic coating. This is about uh, two, three months old. You see it's nice and bright still, so it says bright. Lovely metallic coating. It was really, really easy to put on. We actually thought, could we reproduce the same effects looking at other bright metal solutions? Because obviously, metal plating mostly uses three main solutions, if you forget about gold. Uh, it uses zinc, nickel or copper. And we came up with the zinc bright plating solution as a battery answer, but we looked at nickel and copper as well. And we were able to reproduce the same effects that we got for those three metal plating solutions. And we think it's really actually about something rather exciting. Normally, it's quite difficult to electroplate something well, and once you've finished electroplating it, you have quite a job on finishing it to make it bright and shiny. So, using these, however, it comes out of the plating system already nice and shiny, and the amount of finishing that I've done on most of these is a simple rub with Brasso, and sometimes not even that. They come out beautifully. So you've seen the zinc, here's the nickel plate, and as you can see, it's another nice bright plate. And we have a copper plate here, where we did with our coppering solution, and we put those onto this conductive plastic. So we have those three plating solutions actually doing really rather nice job. Now there are two ways that we can um, plate something that we're going to use to plate. One way is where we do something called wand plating, and that's very popular, wand or brush plating. Uh, and you essentially don't use a bath, you connect um, your negative to the thing you're going to plate, you're positive to the wand, and then you rub the wand over with a bit of solution and it will electroplate. And we're going to do exactly the same thing. Now this plastic is conductive throughout as well as across its surface, so instead of connecting to the plastic and, and bre maybe breaking the plastic, I've got the plastic on a bit of aluminium, and I'll connect my negative to the aluminium, because that is going to attract all those positive metal ions and deposit them on there. And then I attract my positive to my wand. Now the wand is actually a, the donor metal. And in this case it's going to be zinc. So it'll be zinc for the zinc plating solution. It will be nickel for the nickel plating solution. It will be copper for the copper plating solution. And that gets attached to your positive in wand plating. So we've got here a piece of zinc. And so I'm basically making a quick wand. A piece of zinc and a bit of dishcloth on the outside of the zinc. And if I put my hand round there and give it a rub, then obviously I've made a wand. Now if you buy a wand, they're essentially the same thing. They just have a nice handle, a nice flat surface, a little bit of sponge on there for you, but they're essentially the same thing. So you can either buy a wand, which tends to be about 30, 40 quid, or you can just make your own, which costs nothing at all. So it just really depends what it is that you want to do. Now you'll notice I'm wearing gloves because I'm going to be using this power supply and I don't want to give myself little shocks. And also, although these are relatively safe, this one isn't. This is a nickel salt, and all nickel salts that are soluble, remember, are uh, carcinogenic. So you shouldn't really be messing around with nickel unless you know what you're doing. These are chemicals, so who knows what they'll do to you in the long run. They are relatively safe in chemical terms. Uh, so, you know, this one is really harmless. I usually dip my fingers in it and don't really bother about it. Same with this one. This one I tend to be a little bit more circumspect about. So it's not something that's particularly dangerous or worrying, but it is equally not something to be blasé about as a lot of nickel plate, a lot of metal platers will tell you. Now metal plating is something of a mysterious art. It's quite difficult to get it right and quite difficult to um, do a good job because there's just so many variables. There's concentration, there is temperature, there's the current density, that is the amount of current you apply for surface area. An awful lot of things come into play when it's metal plating that make it quite difficult to get a really nice job really quickly. And one thing that surprised us was how easy and robust this system was. So if we're looking at something like current density, what we're looking at is applying a current per square uh, centimetre or surface area of the thing that we're applying. And in order to do a good job, you need to apply to a sort of rate of 10 to 30 milliamps per square centimetre. So something like that, where I'm doing that with it, it's got about two square centimetres, we really ought to be applying somewhere between kind of like 30, 40 milliamp hours on that. In order to do that, what I normally do would set my power supply to about two volts. If I don't do that, what happens is you get dendrite formation, you get spongy deposits, and they're very grey and lacklustre, they fall off easily, they have poor adhesion, that sort of thing. Now you can see already if I take one of my nickel plate and roll it up, the adhesion there is absolutely brilliant. And one of the things we found about this is um, it doesn't actually matter. We can whack that up to like 20, 30 volts and it 
does it really well. If we do it down at 2 volts, we get quite a slow plate. If we do it at 20 volts, the plate's actually quite quick. Now, that is astounding, actually, that it will respond like that. So I take a little bit of my zinc brightener and pour it in that, just enough to wet the area, really, or wet my sponge, whichever it is, I'm going to wet the area. The rest of that, when you finish, can just go back in the bottle, so it's incredibly economic. You don't use that much. And I've got my finger wrapped around there, and all I'm going to do is wipe that over the surface, and very, very quickly, that will actually zinc plate. In fact, almost immediately, because of that voltage, that is zinc plating. And you keep this going until you get the brightness or thickness of plate that it is that you're looking for. And this is brush or wand plating. Really quite a simple process. The challenge of it is to get that bright plate after you've finished because the control of these things can be quite difficult. Here, like I say, all we're doing is, oops, a bit hot. All we're doing is rubbing that. And if we rub that, then we get that result. A nice, bright, shiny, thick plate. Now I'm a bit more uh, careful uh, then I'll get something like that. I'm just being quick because of this. Having done that, of course, what we really want to do is look at the more traditional method of plating, and that is uh, bath plating. And as I say, you can pour that back and just keep that. We use hardly any of that solution. In order to do the other plating, I'm going to do nickel plating, because to be honest, this really, really did astonish me at the speed at which this worked. I'm going to take a bit of new dolly metal, in this case it's nickel because I'm nickel plating and I'm going to use the nickel salts. And remember, the donor metal is the one that gets attached to the positive. The surface that you're plating is the one that gets attached to the negative. So we'll see if we can get that in place. There we go, it's in place. And I'm going to plate a bit of copper. Uh, you can't plate copper directly with zinc. So I'm going to plate the nickel onto a bit of copper. And what I do is take my nickel plating solution Fill it up past there. Now it's still at 20 volts, so I've left this at 20 volts. And this is one of the things that I found absolutely amazing. I hope to really clean the surface better than a wipe with a dirty towel. So a bit of a wash with acetone, maybe even a sand off will do it actually. And it connect up the copper. And the only reason we're using copper, because obviously copper is a nice bright red colour, and we'll be able to see the silvery shine that comes out with it. And I'm going to give it about 10 seconds or so. So if I pop that in there and give that about 10 seconds. And there we go. <laughs> that actually is amazing, okay? Absolutely amazing. We have a bright nickel plate on there. No finishing required, and it took about 10 seconds to do it. That just astonished me when we found that. And as we say, it's quite an adherent coating. No finishing required. Sometimes I give them a go over with a little bit of brasso just to make them a little bit shinier. But that's the limit of the finish that you actually need to put. And of course, this is not wasted. This you just pour back in the bottle and use again another time. So equally, it uses hardly any of this material to do the job that you want to do. So we were so astounded with all of that stuff, we actually made these three solutions and we put them up for sale in the shop. And obviously what we're looking for is to sell these things so that we can uh, run the further activities that we do. And we're really just sharing with you some of the um, discoveries, if you like, that we've made, particularly in this bright metal plating solutions that we've come up with. And the fact that they um, plate quickly, that they require very little in the way of finishing, they use hardly any material, and they're, in these terms, innocuous liquids is just a real win as far as we're concerned, and certainly astounded us. So I hope that was of interest to you, and thank you very much for watching.